Hey guys, this is hopefully going to be a quick one, but a really, really good one. Um, so first off, shout out to, uh, he's in here somewhere, there he is, Daniel from the uh, comment section from my previous video, or my video that I just uploaded today, maybe yesterday, deciding, or depending on when I decide to upload this video. Um, but he had mentioned that he had been trying my settings, and he had been doing a 720p lock mod, and he'd been getting good performance with that. And then he said that there's a new FPS++ mod out, as well as running the uh, SteamOS 3.5 beta. And now he said he's getting high 30s. So, of course, I had to check that out. And uh, check it out, I did. So, as you can see, here are my old uh, mods list that I'm using. So, version 1.1. I know there's the 1.1.1 update out now. I haven't tried that out yet. Um, this mod does appear to be compatible with uh, my other current mods and my other my setup and everything. Nothing appears to be broken. Uh, the cutscenes don't appear to be running at double speed or anything wacky like that. Um, so yeah, so if you want to just pause and look, and here's all the mods there. In order to get the mods, um, honestly, Reddit's your best friend, GBA Temp, um, go wild. It, it's not too hard to find them. Just type in whatever mod I have typed in there, and then you know, in Google. It's not too bad. Um, the FPS++ mod um, comes in a package, though, from GBA Temp, so it has a lot of these mods already, um, but you might have to go to Banana Mod as well to find some of these. But anyway, we'll get into it. And sorry, I forgot to mention, um, here are my settings that I used as well. Um, sorry, I thought I had it labeled out. There we go. <clears throat> sorry. So yeah, these were my... Uh, Friggin' YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> My apologies. So, using the uh, latest Yuzu EA, uh, and then here were my settings as follows. Um, I, I won't list them all off, but mainly, yeah, uh, SMT on SteamOS 3.5 was my recommended way to go. So getting into the benchmark, uh, this is kind of a information dense slide. I apologize for that. Um, but kind of the key takeaways here are the inside column here is the 97th percentile. The second column kind of here numbers is the 0.1% lows. The third column here and up to here is the 1% lows. And then the far right is the FPS average. Um, I set it up this way, it seemed a little bit easier on the eyes that way, especially with the longer bar kind of throwing things off with the 97th percentile. So the main numbers you want to focus on are these and these, really, as well as the 0.1% lows. Um, 97th percentile, not that big of a deal, but I included it because now we are getting over 40 FPS in certain cases, or over 30. Uh, like in some cases, I was averaging 35 in some areas. But anyway, so this is the uh, gameplay benchmark that I was doing in what I just showed you in the video and what's probably playing in the background right now when I edit it all. Um, but anyway, so I tested it all on 3.4.6 as well as 3.5. So this is just a straight test between the two. So I carried over our 3.5 run 2 from yesterday's video, our baseline from yesterday's. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see here, nothing really kind of kept it. Um, so I, 3.4.6, like obviously did worse because of the SMT bug and we can consistently show that. Um, but the, uh, 3.5, sorry, when we switched over 3.5, I did an uneven amount of runs because I know uneven numbers annoy people. So have fun with that. Um, but anyway, uh, the uh, 3.5 was performing uh, better, about on par with 3.4, uh, sorry, but consistently better at times. 
Um, so we did get a new uh, FPS average out of this one. So that was, or we did match it, sorry. So we got 5.5, 15.9, and then we get a 33.3 average compared to 29.8 average. Um, but anyway, so if you really care about the numbers, you can just pause and read it. But I'll just move on to the next one because this is kind of like a... Eh. So anyway, getting back into it. So now I'm just running strictly 3.5 uh with a 720p lock mod because again uh daniel from the comments was saying that 720p uh lock mod was helping him get better fps so here's our uh 3.5 run to our new baseline from last time and then here was our 3.5 run 7 from the last slide with our best fps plus plus mod run so as you can see here it's fairly comparable but the averages are higher than the uh new than the old baseline sorry the 0.1% low is lower, but, you know, it's within spitting distance. And then the 1% low is the exact same. So anyway, so getting into the 720p results, um, I was never able to match my best uh, run 7 there. So honestly, I didn't really see too much of a difference. Even the averages were all about the same. The 1% lows were worse, really, and the 0.1% uh, lows were a little worse as well um yeah the only thing that was really better i guess technically was the 97th percentile but again that doesn't really matter and it's within spitting distance so uh, as i suspected the 720p lock mod doesn't really do too much it what it's supposed to do is lock it to 720p uh, internal resolution uh, whether it's docked or in handheld mode but we're not uh, GPU limited whatsoever running this game. It's all 100% CPU limitations here. So you're not really going to see a gain like you would in a normal kind of modern day game from dropping down to 1440p down to 1080 and then even 720, right? Like it's it just won't work like that with emulation. Emulation, 99% of the times your CPU limited if you're having problems. So moving on to the next one, um, I decided to test SMT off again just because I was curious and I just felt like doing more runs. Um, so I did three runs of that, consistently worse, the averages were worse, the 1% lows were worse, the 0.1% lows were actually like we did get better on uh, the SMT off run three here. Um, but yeah, so it either way, it's still choppier with SMT off. And you can see here when I did a fresh kind of reboot of Yuzu and I did a new run with SMT on, we got 32.7, 16.9, 1% low and a 6.8, 0.1% low. So this, I we beat our old run already. <clears throat> and in the 1% and the 0.1% lows, we beat uh, our best run seven there. The averages was worse, but it's still above 30. So now what this run or this benchmark was sorry was all those graphics mods that i had mentioned in my previous video um so it's the lod patch the lod mods uh the shadow mods and all that stuff i turned all those off and i kept the 720p uh lock mod on and these were the results here so here is our best fps plus plus run uh that was from the previous slide so as you can see here in the uh, three runs that I did, again, we were worse in the point and the 1% lows, but the averages, they were about the same. The 0.1% lows were a little bit worse. And then when I turned all mods back on, like we were still kind of in line. So honestly, this was kind of a golden run here. Um, and that's got to do with just the shader compilation stutters and just the random stutters that you're still going to get during the gameplay, no matter what. Um, like even, even when you're playing Metroid Prime Remastered, or even if you're playing Breath of the Wild, you're still going to get a little bit of those shader stutters. You can get shader packs from other people, but building your own, I believe is the best way to go about it. Uh, like it just, when I've done it that way, it just seems to play smoother as opposed to grabbing somebody else's shaders and kind of shoehorning it into yours. But whatever works best for you. Uh, if you're getting better results than somebody else's or whatever, or different versions, by all means. Um, but anyway, so we'll just move on to the next one here. And then somebody commented as well that the best change that they made was changing to the one gigabyte UMA frame buffer size. That's in the uh, BIOS settings 
uh, cryo like cryo utilities, cryobyte. They all recommend it to go on to four gigabytes for most games. Um, I believe Red Dead Redemption Two is kind of one of the outliers where one gigabyte will do better. So I changed it down to one gigabyte and I reran uh, the test three times, and we were kind of getting in line with our best four gigabyte result here from our FPS plus plus run. So with that, I would say there's really no difference running one gigabyte versus four gigabyte. If you're running one gigabyte just because you didn't change it or don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. Again, these are just the variances between the runs. It's one of the more consistent areas I could find, but we're going to get into more hardcore areas, I guess, in the next couple slides. So this is what I call my Mount Doom run. Um, I'll play the footage in the background. I know it's not Mount Doom, but whatever. So anyway, so we run past Mount Doom, and this is during a lightning storm as well, which perfectly lined up when I got there. So these are not one-for-one, one, like for like runs whatsoever. I took the same path, but the weather and the lightning bolts hitting me at the times that they did were completely random. They were not at the exact same times. So take all this with a grain of salt. It's not a one-for-one -one comparison. But as you can see from doing these runs and with all the variances, there was no combat, but there was all the heavy weather effects. We were still getting above an FPS average of 30. And even with my shader compilation run here, because it was my very first run, I've never been in this area before, we were still getting above 30 FPS average. Our 0.1% lows were a little bit worse. That's the shader compilation stutter. And the 1% lows were a little bit worse as well. But not too far off from when my three other runs, when the shaders were mostly, if not all, compiled. So as you can see here, with this mod in these heavy areas, Yes, it's very playable. I, I would say yes, it's 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 damn playable. And then we go on to the next area because I noticed in the heaviest spots was when I first started out and running up towards the gates of Mount Doom there, that was the heaviest spot. I was getting between 22 to 30 FPS in those areas, depending on what was going on. So in my next run or my next slide, what I did was just run straight to the door and then straight back to the statue that's right out front of Mount Doom there. On my first run here, there was uh, the shader compilation run. We got a 25.4 FPS average. Again, this is one of the heavier areas that I could find with all the weather effects and everything going on. But we still had a 1% low of 11.6, 12.5. Like, it, it's, it's still damn playable. There's going to be those heavy areas. Like, there's going to be those heavy areas, those heavy instances. You can't benchmark every exact instance in this game especially with the ultra hand you're always going to drop fps with that ultra hand and when you're making your crazy contraptions and whatever but i think now more than ever tears of the kingdom is playable on the steam deck and from now like even even though i'm an idiot and i forgot to change it back over to four gigabyte uma frame buffer which was giving me a little bit better results even though comparable uh, when I kind of tested the two, it's still damn playable. 
like uh, there's a lot of people out there that have said, yeah, I'm playing it. I've played it. I've beaten it. I've, I'm doing my second run, whatever, on the Steam Deck. And this was even before these mods. The, that was like, I could play this game now, I think. Uh, knowing that there's going to be those heavy areas and the slowdowns and whatever. But knowing that these mods are coming out daily almost or hourly at times. Like, holy shit. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this will probably be my last kind of in-depth performance analysis for a while um for tears of the kingdom at least all if there's anything relevant i'll pin comments on this i'll if somebody says oh yeah these settings work whatever i'll pin the comments and if there's any again if there's any major major changes i will then do another video this was major enough to me because now tears of the kingdom is very playable on the steam deck there's areas where you're going to be getting a well above 30 FPS. There's areas where you're going to be getting sub 30 FPS. But there were less and less of those slowdowns of getting to like 2 FPS, 5 FPS, 10 FPS. Consistently in my Mount Doom run, it was like even though the 1% lows and stuff, it shows otherwise. But in the frame time graph when I was watching it, I couldn't see it drop really below 20 except for those moments of stutters when the shader compilation or when the lightning bolts hit or whatever. Um, so that's why I included the lightning bolt hit accounts here too. Um, but anyway, now I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Um, sorry for the uh, sorry for the other shoehorned in giveaway. Um, I wasn't planning on doing a giveaway, but we're over 200 subscribers now. So thank you again for subscribing. Um, definitely not necessary. But it's appreciated nonetheless. Um, anyway, that'll do it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your guys' experiences playing this game. Let me know if you're going to play it on the Steam Deck now. If you're going to check it out. Whatever. If you want to tell Nintendo on me, go ahead. I don't care. Um, but anyway, that'll do it for this one. Have a great day, guys.